Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai, Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai, Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahawa Shai. Let us give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahawa, Bahashem, Yahawa Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, Brakata. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, the true leaders of all Israel earth today, if you can receive it. And much love, salutations to the Akim that are across the four corners of the earth that's pushing his word in sincerity and in truth, risking their lives and freedom to do so. All right, to you, I say Shalom. All right, I'm coming to you with a topic in mind from uh, a video that Apostle Rakat did um, entitled, uh, We Gotta Keep we gotta keep Wired Tight. All right, um, his channel is GMS Push On. All right, and it's, he it say, keep your shit wired tight. You see that second video right there. And um, he made a statement, basically, with this here scripture, and it can speak it better than I will, so I don't want to butcher it. I'm going to bring it out in the second edition, the eighth chapter. But it made a statement, and I'm just going to basically land back off of it and uh, just flow through the spirit. So um, it's this second edition, 8 and 50, and it reads, For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world. All right. And that's basically the prophecies being fulfilled of Matthew, the 24th chapter, where it prophesies of uh, pestilence and famines and earthquakes in diverse places and hearing of wars, rooms of wars and nations rising against nations. All right. These is all coming to pass on this here generation that we live in. As a matter of fact, I got to grab a quick one before it escapes me. Um, and then. Able, yeah, this is Luke, right? Quick 11 and I want to say 51. It says, From the from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple, verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. All right, so I should have started up Salakia. Um, at 50, it says that the blood of all the prophets, which it which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. That's what it is, man. All right. So these many great miseries are going to fall upon this generation, you know, even in this present day through the reincarnation. You know, the people back in their lot doing the same things and elect just about being sealed. So the apostle to our fields, you know, we, we, we know we at the end of this thing. So all these great miseries is now starting to come to the forefront because the Lord is about to visit the world, which he made, as is mentioned in Second Edges, the ninth chapter. So I'm going to reread again, Second Edges 8 and 50. For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world because they have walked in great pride. And if you know any other characteristics of the Lord is that he hates pride. So without further ado, I'm going to open this here chapter. Proverbs 6, start at 16, and it reads, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yeah, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Okay, so pride or that prideful look, that haughty look, if you will. All right, the Lord hates that. All right, and that's what this place is all about. Uh, uh, self promotion, if you will. For example, uh, celebrating birthdays. This day is all about me, as if you ain't supposed to glorify the Lord twenty four seven. You know, just about not being over righteous, but you get the you get where I'm coming from, man. You know, it's not about you. Nothing is of man. All right, the Lord's supposed to be glorified in all things. He said, if you're gonna boast in anything, you boast in your how about shimmy how shot, man. Yeah, I'm just using that as an example, though. All right, that's a uh, that brings about a proud look, and even how. Esau Edom, as it says in Psalms, the 83rd chapter, he lifted up the head. That's a proud look. That's another reason why the Lord has to destroy a part of this generation being the heathens. And then even the two thirds that walk around with their head held high, you know, and it says a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood and how they carry out hits on one another. All right. All the wickedness that goes on in like cities like Chicago, L.A., you know, all these rural areas, all this gang banging and shit. These are the things that the Lord hates. It says verse 18 and heart that deviseth wicked imagination. So that's going into your mind, all right? In Hebrew word, that's lob, which is your mind, all right? That deviseth wicked imaginations. You know, like the scriptures prophesy about, uh, he said, the wicked have waited for me to destroy me. That's a wicked imagination to have, all right? 
It goes on to say feet that be swift and running to mischief. All right. To do some kind of wickedness, man. It says a false witness that speaketh lies and he that soweth discord among brethren. All right. So that seventh one is an abomination to him that soweth discord amongst brethren, you know, uh, upsetting the tempo and, and, and the brotherly love and, and the charity and whatnot that's amongst us. That's what it's going into, you know, so in discord, bringing about strife and, and, and contention and whatnot. OK, but those are some of the characteristics. So the Lord does hate. Contrary to popular belief, because many people think the Lord is all love and he don't have any other characteristic than that. But it don't make sense for the Lord to, you know, create creatures that have more feelings than himself. Nonetheless, uh, going back into the original topic of Second Edges 8 and 50, how he said many great miseries shall come upon this generation. This here is Hosea 4 and 1. And going into the six things that the Lord hate, this coincide with it. It says, hear the word of the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, ye children of Israel. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of Yahweh in the land. So the Lord, he hath a controversy with the inhabitants, even to this present generation. It says, by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood toucheth blood. Therefore shall the land mourn and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish. With the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. So that's the point, man. All right. These many great miseries are going to come upon this nation because all this is taking place. All right. All right. You got people lying and swearing. That's 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 second nature to Jake. Wicked ass Jack. These wicked ass two thirds. All right. But killing and stealing and committing adultery. And, you know, the adultery goes both ways, both physically and spiritually, you know, whether you be sleep with another man's wife or a woman out here sleeping around with multiple men or also uh, spiritual fornication, which you bound down and serve another God, such as Caesar Borgia, you know, uh, Allah. You got Jake go to jail. They want to turn to Muslim and all that BS. You know, those those are real, some of the reasons why the Lord had the controversy with the land and why these great miseries going to come upon this place, man. You know, you got these idols and these images up on your walls and you, tat you tattoo them on your body. You're wearing Jesus pieces and all that shit, man. OK, so there's many great miseries going to come upon this place and rightfully so, because it's going contrary to the guidelines of the scriptures, man. All right. Let's see what else I got lined up. Uh, this is Matthew 10 and 34 it says, think not that I'm coming to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. All right. So Yahweh Shimei Sha is about to come visit this world which he made, all right? And when he comes to visit it, he's not coming to reason or talk with you guys. He's doing the talking now with his prophets that's on the highways and the byways. Now, when the famine of the world comes, we no longer go out there and preach and teach and so on and so forth. Then he's withdrawing his hand completely, all right? And when he comes back, he's coming to bring a sword, which is any instrument of cruelty of, for, of war, all right? Which is going to bring about death. Whether it be a little sword, bio welfare, uh, uh, high cholesterol, you get attacked by a beast, what have you, a car accident, whatever, you know, the Lord is coming to bring back. But the ultimate sword is the intercontinental ballistic missiles. All right. And uh, Russia just was talking about the bride of Satan. They just unveiled. So it's coming, man. And it's going to come upon this wicked ass generation. Last but not least. This Zephaniah 1 and 12, it says, and it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem. All right. With candles and punish the men that are set on the least. And he got the light. We the light of the world, man. All right. He got us sifting the house of Israel, spiritually marking men for either salvation and destruction. When we out there on the highways and the byways, man, as he tells you in Deuteronomy 30 and 19. All right. I set before you life and death. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. All right. But Jake, when they turn their back or they cast these words behind them, that's them ultimately choosing death. And you made a covenant with, with death. All right. So the Lord said he coming to search Jerusalem with candles. It says and punish the men that are set on their leaves. So these people that's complacent, that's not on fire, that's cold, that's not willing to sacrifice, you know, or show brotherly love and charity and so on and so forth. They content with a little nine to five job and working for the oppressor. And so on and so forth. The Lord said he's coming to punish you people. All right. It's even it's even prophesying the scriptures that uh about these women. Let me get it. Let me not talk about it. Let me, let me get it right quick. Um, let 
just to make a statement in the book of uh, Timothy, if I am mistaken. Yeah, First Timothy 5 and 6, it says, But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And that's a literal statement right there, you know? If you living it up and you ain't serving how about Shemiah shot, you receive them benefits as is prophesied in the in the apocrypha and have not known the Lord. He said you gotta know death by pain, man. Let me get that right quick. And I'm gonna bring it back. The second Ezra, uh what was that? Uh is it nine and thirteen? Yeah. I'm gonna start up at the point though. It says second Ezra is nine and nine. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. So them that cast the word behind their back. It tells you that in Zechariah 7 and 11, if I'm mistaken. You know, how they, uh, they, 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 they cast the word behind them. They pulled away the shoulder. It says, verse 10, for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. And these benefits could come a multitude of ways, whether it be the Lord getting you out of a, a jam, a situation where you could have damn near died or, or uh, saved you from a predicament. You know, think back about all the times the Lord done blessed you in a certain situation and you ain't have no way out. And the Lord just paved the way, you know, receiving benefits or even uh, welfare. The scriptures say that the welfare going to be taken away in the book of Daniel, you know, but even welfare benefits and things of that nature also come and play a role because we in captivity and Esau being the person that he is, he don't have to, you know, the Lord don't have to have mercy and put it on his spirit to give out handouts, but he do, you know. So those are going to the benefits. And he says, and have not known me. So you you cast his words behind you, yet he helping you out. He said he giving us less than, his, than our iniquities deserve, right? That's Psalm 78 and 38. And going to that, he giving us less than our iniquities deserve. All right. So um, it says, and they... That have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. So right now the place of repentance is open through the, through the men that's on the highways and the byways, set to give you people a uh, warning from your how about Shemiah Shai at the, uh, the times that we live in there. All right, it's the time of World War Three. The mark of the beast is about to be mandated. All right, you don't, you're not supposed to take it. If you do, you're going to die. All right, by thermonuclear destruction. It's all prophesied in Revelation 13, 16, you know, Revelation 14, 8, 9. All right, going to all that. And that's what we are here telling our people, but they despise us. And therefore, they're going to get caught up in that snare, in that trap. All right. It says, uh, verse 12, the same must know it after death by pain. And that's the point of this here video, man. All right. These many great miseries going to come upon this here wicked ass generation. Because they don't know Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, and because blood touches blood, and all this wickedness, and the knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is not in the land, man. All right? Last but not least, verse 13, it says, And therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. So don't worry about how they're going to die. Just know, just worry about how you could potentially make it, man. All right? And that's by hearkening to the men that's on the highways and the byways set to give you honor. And hearkening to the order as well through the apostles and elders on down. Taking heed to what they say. All right. This ain't an ain't independent thing, you know. You got, a, you got a guideline to follow, man. Not to digress, but I had to say that, man. All right. Um, I made mention of this. I just want to make sure I'm not going off telling brothers the wrong thing. So Psalm 78 and 38. Let me see what it say. It says, but he being full of compassion forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yeah, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. And that's what Yahweh Shemiah Shah did, man. He given us less than our iniquity to deserve. And that's not the one that I was quoting, but it is a scripture that goes into that, man. Yeah, it says, for he remembered that they were but a flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. All right, that's all we are. And the Lord had mercy and compassion unto us. Um, just want to see which one it is. Um, Ezra nine and thirteen. All right, it says, and after all that is come upon us for our evil deeds and for our great trespass, seeing that thou, our power, Yahweh Shemuel Shah. 
has punished us less than our iniquities deserve and has given us such deliverance as this, you know, and unless the Lord looking out for us once again, time after time again, though we committed all kind of spiritual uh, uh, fornication against them, you know, and, and iniquity and transgression and whatnot, man. So I just wanted to make that point. Let me close on this one here. Once again, Zephaniah 1 and 12, and it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their leaves that say in their heart, the Lord Jehovah will not do good. Neither will he do evil. And these, you know, you can say too, some of these wicked ass pastors who are here leading the house astray, causing them to err, you know, they too going to get punished because they settled in their leaves. They comfortable. They living it up. You know, the Creflo Dollar, he got him. He sitting on millions, man. You know, you got a private jet and all that shit, man. You T.D. Jakes and so on and so forth making, doing good, causing you people to err. You know, it's ridiculous that Micah 3 and 11, y'all should look that up. But with that, I'm going to say Shalom. As always, hold fast that which is good. All right. A Baba ball.